Hi, my name is Chan Gyo Han, and I am an assistant professor at the University of Tokyo. In this video, I am going to talk about our research paper, 3D printing firm inflatables with internal tethers. This work is done with my collaborators, Ryo Takahashi, Yuchi Ahagi, and Takeshi Naimura. Inflatables are widely used in our daily life. They are lightweight and can be stored compact and easily inflated for deployment and safe to interact with because they are soft. In the field of HCCI, they are helping a body of research on inflatables and pneumatic actuation. The most popular application is to employ the inflatable structures as shape-changing interfaces as presented in new eye and mirror morph. To fabricate such inflatable structure to achieve desired function or shape, there are roughly three methods exist. Cutting and welding flash sheets with digital fabrication machines, silicon casting, and directly printing inflatable membrane within a gel bed. We focused on the fabrication process and the characteristic of the inflatable objects and found the following challenges. First, heat welding and silicon casting requires lots of manual labor during fabrication. Rapid liquid printing can directly print the desired shape in one go, but this is not a common technology that most makers have access to. And the fabricated inflatables are usually not firm. To make an inflatable object rigid, we can apply high internal the pressure object. to the object. However, such high pressure can destroy the shape of the object because nothing can hold the inflatable membrane to grow outwards. To address these challenges, we focused on drop stitch inflatables which was used in the research paper POIMO. These inflatables have lots of yarns that connect opposing surfaces. They help the surfaces to remain flat even under high pressure, but can only be manufactured at certain length. What if these internal tethers can be placed in different places with custom lengths? So we focused and aimed to leverage bridging techniques in FDM 3D printing to generate internal tethers. Bridging in 3D printing is an extrusion of material that horizontally links to rated points like pillars or walls. Prior work leveraged printed bridges to make scaffolding or with fabrics. Design of the internal tethers were done in a popular 3D CAD software, Fusion 360. Tethers can be generated by cloning thin rectangular bars, and then they are trimmed to fit inside the membrane model. After adjusting the thickness of the membrane, the tethers can be combined with the membrane model. Finally, track valve insert is created. The 3D model is exported and processed by common 3D printing slicer, Cura, and 3D printed with a flexible material like TPU. We use check valves that are used in bicycle wheels to cap the hole to make the inflatable airtight. We measured the tensile properties of the printed tethers in various lengths and thicknesses to confirm their elongations at high internal pressure. Please refer to the paper for details. We also observed that the printed tethers can retain the shape of the inflatable object. This test bar deformed only about 10% in thickness, even at 20 psi air pressure. We designed and fabricated two example objects. In the case of this tablet stand, the internal tethers constrain these two angle surfaces at different lengths. As the internal tethers do not take too much volume, it can be folded for its flip-flops. We confirmed that these flip-flops can support the weight of a person. Also, by changing the internal air pressure, softness of the flip-flops can be adjusted to match user's preferences. We expect that this technique is useful for making firm, lightweight, and compact inflatables in an accessible way. Finally, I will conclude my talk by describing the limitations and future work. First, we confirm the feasibility of the proposed method by manual design in a 3D CAD software, but a customized interactive design software is desirable. Second, users might not sure how to determine the parameters and locations of the internal tethers. A computational design method and providing expected results would help. Lastly, although we used FDM printing as fabrication method, it takes lots of time to print a single object. For mass production, weaving threads into existing fabric sheet could be feasible. Thank you so much for your attention on my talk, and I welcome your questions and comments.